in uh, Johnson Strait, the mainland of British Columbia. It's a um, two to three mile wide channel that in the summertime has the highest concentration of orcas on the planet. The next piece of civilization going that way is the coast of Russia or Japan. Uh, the next civilization going north is probably 70 or 80 miles. So this is, this is wilderness. Nobody lives around here. John DeBook is a former high school biology teacher who left the classroom for a life at sea. During 18 years as a commercial boat captain, John's developed a love for killer whales. He helps researchers by taking ID photos of the whales in the area. And over time, he's become an expert at identifying these amazing creatures. Okay, there's A33 right beside us. You can see the little dip at the edge of his fin. That's his mom, A12. All of their fins are different, just as almost everybody's face is different, unless you have an identical twin. Uh, some of the differences are really subtle, but some of them are very distinctive, and you just get to know the shape of the fin and the markings of the saddle patch, and also the family size, because the family remains constant. A pod of orcas is like a big extended family. They're a mother and her offspring. They live together their whole lives. All of their, their hunting behaviors and their social behaviors are all learned. So they're learning strategies on how to find salmon. They're learning strategies on how to avoid hazards of whatever they might be. That looks like G6. I remember that fin. He had his fin injured uh, probably 15 years ago. In fact, I saw him the day after it happened, and he, he'd been hit by a propeller. Oh, reach. Whales often play by leaping out of the water and slapping themselves against the surface in what's called a breach. Scientists think they may do this to stun their prey. <laughs> but an awful lot of their breaching is just because it's fun. They do it because they can do it. His fin is uh, about six feet tall. Just maintain your course. As we slow down for a better look, the whales surprisingly surround our boat. This is wild. I think they've, uh, I think they found a fish down here. Orcas often feed on schools of salmon and tuna, as well as porpoises, seals, and squid. This is amazing. They are so relaxed, they're not even at all concerned about our presence. You can hear them vocalizing on the surface. We need to put our hydrophone in. I'm gonna put the hydrophone in and see if we can hear these guys communicating. At the request of researchers, John's been recording the whale's songs. He does this with a special underwater mic known as a hydrophone. They think that their vocalizations communicate things like excitement, peace of mind, whether they're happy or excited or uh, those sorts of emotions. And then also you hear clicks. Uh, those are echolocation clicks that they use for navigation and for finding salmon. <laughs> well, they're coming right at us. It's hard to tell who they are because they're you're just seeing the edge of their fin. They're um, yeah, they're they're coming playing. Watch your cord. Camera. That's amazing. That is incredible. Hey. I thought they were going to eat the hydrophone. I'm sitting here listening to it, and they came right after it, and they're clicking. We're right on the edge of the Robson Bite Michael Big Ecological Reserve, established for the benefit of the killer whales of the north coast of British Columbia. Uh, these whales are traveling inside the reserve. Uh, here's the boundary. We're stopping here because uh, basically people aren't invited inside the reserve. It's a whale-only area. Today was an absolutely fantastic day. We saw behaviors that sometimes you won't see for uh, a week or two if you're out on the water every day, all day. 
After a day like this, I feel about as good as I can feel.